So next up, we've got Chris Foster, uh, who is going to talk to us about the ground beetle recording scheme and his experience of moving everything across from the recording scheme onto iRecord. So over to you, Chris. Looking forward to the talk. Thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, really delighted to join the Fairy Creature in the Way. That's the joys of doing talks from home. It's decided now is the time to join me. Uh, in terms of moving the ground beetle scheme onto iRecord, all the data, I'll come on to that. But actually, that part for me was relatively easy, thanks to the support of the Biological Record Center. Uh, I, I'm not the technical brains behind that, but I, I'm happy to say a, a few words about that. Um, so, without further ado, that's me. So, I, I'm really a general. Uh, natural historian, wildlife enthusiast, uh, and ground beetles were just one of the groups I was interested in. Uh, it's just and a, a group that happened to suddenly become free when I was offering to be more involved with recording schemes, uh, basically. And I have tried to make the scheme a bit visible, so get out there, do some talks, have a presence on social media to try and generate a bit of interest. One of the questions people always often ask me if, if they're getting in touch to uh, on any matters to do with biological recording will say um, well who are your recorders or when you can you communicate this with your recorders and I think I'm not actually sure who my recorders are I don't own them uh, we're not a membership society like some of the other schemes so that's been one of the really interesting questions to grapple with about how to create that sense of community around recording ground beetles and the first two questions I had to ask myself um, excuse me, my screen started flickering there, sorry. I hope it was okay for you. The questions I had to ask myself, first of all, was what is a recording scheme? Uh, I'm now coordinating a recording scheme. What does that look like? And of course, it's actually hugely variable depending on what group you look at. If it's plants, there are there's an entire society for recording of plants for birds. You have the British Trust for Ornithology. They've got headquarters, loads of staff. Uh, lot, it's a membership organization. Um, for many of the invertebrate groups, it is essentially as they someone sat at home with a spreadsheet very often. Uh, and that is, I'm trying to move us along the spectrum a little bit from just me with some spreadsheets to, again, more of a community of people, more people involved both with organizing and running the scheme and also with actually doing the recording. And the second question, of course, that everyone else wants to know when I go and talk about them, or what are ground beetles? Well, ground beetles are brilliant. That's the first thing to say. Uh, they're the perfect entry level and expert level group of beetles. They, they give you enough for a whole lifetime's worth of study. You have everything from extremely small, obscure, little three millimeter, two millimeter, less than two millimeter species, uh, little black ones, up to fabulously colorful and in your face and really big. So we have pretty much the whole range, 374 species. So it's, it's just about the perfect size for me. Never get bored, but you do feel you can get into them. There's something to learn at all stages of people's journey in terms of how much they feel they know. And so the scheme itself has been running for a long time, but what I don't really have is a good sense of what that history looks like, to be perfectly honest. So I, I like this thing on the uh, UK beetle recording site. We've got a, a, a homepage for the UK beetle schemes. The ground beetle recording scheme has a presence there. And there isn't much to it. There's something I'd like to do more with with the website. Um, and I see that this little phrase here, previous scheme organizers have included Mark Telfer and Martin Luff. Now, these are two people who know an awful lot about brown beetles and about many other things. I am not one of those people, so I, I still find it strange to see my name in that sentence. So again, previously, recording schemes have often been run by the taxonomic experts. Uh, I know enough to to do to verify record, records for most of the many of the species, uh, I'm very happy with um, what things are. But I'm not the taxonomic expert. Uh, I sit somewhere in the middle, I think, and I am again trying to build a community of people with different skills and strengths, rather than all having to go through one person. Taxonomic experts, I'm sure, would hold their hand up. They're very busy people, and so they're not always uh, the people you want actually organising, coordinating things. 
uh, might, might be very busy uh, being the expert because it, it's quite hard work. People now do expect me to know things uh, and I do know a few. So I'm endeavoring to become an expert and I'm guessing there. Uh, and there's no, I'd say there's no better uh, incentive in life to uh, trying to develop expertise than everyone just assuming that you will know everything, which is now the case. And when I got hold of this is what it looked like. I had an actual submitted through various routes, people sending spreadsheets, submitting record cards, um, up to date, all installed, all in this access database. Can everyone still hear me okay? Because I've just got a your internet is unstable yeah, message. Yeah, you're dropping out a little bit. What I just recommend you do is for now, if you turn off your video, see if yeah. that helps a bit. Uh, if you've got if you've got I will do that, yeah. Like that running in the background, then uh, not them off as well. I, yeah, I hoped I'd stopped it, but if you'll just give me a moment, I'll see, I'll make sure that it's, yeah, it's not open, so. Yeah, we can that okay? hear loud and clear. Brilliant. That's perfect. I shall carry on. You don't need, you certainly don't need to see my face anyway, so that's fine. Um, so I, I had the, it's a Microsoft Access, and all of that data is available through the NBN Atlas. It's uploaded as a data set calls, uh, it's either Carabidi or Grand Beetle Records, I can never remember which, up to 2014. Also on the NBN Atlas, you'll see data from iRecord, which is not exactly since 2014, it's since iRecord. And those two data sets contained uh, Grand Beetle data available through the scheme. We were in the middle of the process of uploading that database into the engine underlying iRecord so that all of the tools that iRecord gives us uh, would be useful. And I think crucially also, so that the database just didn't sit in a few people's computer hard drives, so that that was actually in the cloud, it was secure. Uh, other people would be able to use it, interrogate it, and make it easier to pass on the scheme and to have other people involved in the management of the data too, which is really important for me. Uh, and for finishing that process, big thanks especially to Robin Hutchinson at, at BRC, who really helped with the, the technical side, the queries, the, the duplicate records, the, the records with slightly dodgy coordinates, all of the things that arise when you try and move records from one system to another were handled really smoothly. And when I look at this map, so the, these, these are now all of our, the, the country is covered in ground beetles. It's not when so much when you zoom in. When I look at this, um, which, which is, it's very exciting. The first thing I noticed actually is I started making social media accounts with uh, Carabidi UK and Ground Beetle UK. And then I saw in the scheme database, we have lots of records for Republic of Ireland. So I'm actually no longer sure where the geographic things end and what Ground Beetle recording is like in the Republic. These are things I'd quite like to get hold of. Uh, who should we be talking to? I, I feel like you know, I'm wading into some kind of uh, political problem. So uh, it's quite interesting to, to see that. And of course, um, the ground beetles don't actually care which side of the lines they're on either. So uh, again, we've got channel lines records in there, which are much more closely aligned to the fauna in France. So it's, it's interesting to see how these things interact. And we have pretty much all of these species that have been recorded in Britain now in our database, all in iRecord. So 340,000 or so records moved across from the old database into iRecord. And this is now the total number of ground beetle records on the system, almost 400,000. So there'll be little balloons and things on our social media when we pass 400,000, you can be assured. So rough, probably more than 50,000 of those records now are from iRecord users. So all of the ground beetle recording scheme data that has been uploaded from our database and from spreadsheets that people still occasionally will send spreadsheet records that we upload. Our, 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 the scheme is a user on iRecord, so most of the data is under the scheme as the recorder, and then over 50,000 additional records have come from other users of iRecord, which is really good, really exciting. And I've set up, uh, spurred by uh, having the, the talk to write, I've finally set up a, a activity for the recording scheme just so people can go in and have a quick snapshot of what's going on. 
I haven't really explored fully what to do with it yet. This, I really love these uh, tools for showing just what people are recording at the moment uh, and where and so on. And it's just, it's just nice to see. And we have uh, records going back to the, the first, which is a little bit hazy, is from 1797, which uh, a predecessor at the scheme has extracted from the literature. Um, this wood tiger beetle in Suffolk, uh, there are some question marks over the identification of that. And the very latest, uh, I have updated this and checked, was this very green tiger beetle submitted yesterday. And just to say, lots of the pictures I use here quite deliberately are from iRecord and from users who have kindly put a Creative Commons license on their all of their photos so that uh, they can be used for other purposes, which I'm, I'm really grateful to people who, who do that. I'm not a brilliant photographer and I don't get out and take a lot of pictures. I should take more. Uh, and it's nice just to be able to show other people's records uh, when I'm out and about talking to people about ground beetles. So we have 226 years worth, give or take, of records now hosted on iRecord. And in terms of what they look like, uh, we, we do have, uh, as Claire said, we have different sorts of users of the system. Um, there, are, there are some who are uh, expert recorders in the group and I will get, if I just pull up one recorder's data to verify, you'll see a long list of species, usually without photographs. Uh, and this does come down to a bit to who you know. If I know that the person is reliable and check things out and checks records, and that um, generally they, they are likely to have submitted uh, records which are correct without a photo, then I can verify them one tick as we assume that's correct. And then there are people who are out and about just recording general wildlife, taking pictures of interesting things that they see and, and identifying it. And so we, we do get uh, quite a lot of photo records for a wide variety of species. I'll, I'll show you more of those in just a moment. Uh, and, there are, and there are, of course, some who sit somewhere in the middle who will give us pictures, which pictures with some of their records, but also submit lots uh, without. And uh, these, are, these are all uh, Martin's records who's speaking later. So that would just, I, I'd be allowed to pick on him probably. And in terms of the most recorded species, I thought this would be of interest as well. Um, the, the number one in terms of records in the database is Pterostichus madidus, which is this is super common medium sized black species with a, a black legged form and a, and a red legged form with about 3% of all the records and over 6% of the photo records in the database are of this species. But the champion for photo records is green tiger beetle, which is probably not a surprise. It's really charismatic. And I think just general uh, nature lovers who are out and about, that's one they're likely to go, wow, and take a picture, send it in, maybe using the iRecord app. It's 12% of the photo records, but m many fewer of the overall records in terms of proportions. Also get lots of uh, records for this genus, Carabus. Again, lots of big charismatic ground beetles, 14% of all the photo records are one of the Carabus species, which is 11, 11 species of beetles, a bit like this. Uh, but some of these are challenging. So in terms of verification, Carabus violaceus and Problematicus are the two violet ground beetles are quite similar. Uh, and we get uh, lots of records submitted for one under the name of the other. So this is one way for verifying. It's, I have to be quite on the ball when I'm looking at those. And occasionally, I will also admit, occasionally my brain just has a kind of day where you, you start questioning yourself because it is a big responsibility uh, actually making the decision as to whether you think that record is correct. Uh, but for the most part, People send wonderful pictures and they don't have to be. You see this, uh, the left hand one, Carabus nitens, really distinctive species. They don't have to be fabulously close up always to show the right features. It's much more important to see what you actually need to see than have a really crisp image. A crisp image from the wrong angle may not actually be identifiable, even though it's a beautiful picture. And then we get lots of records, again, another 16% of the photo records for large uh, black ground beetles, which is what you your typical ground beetle, what people tend to think about. Uh, but again, because there are quite a few species which are fairly similar, uh, there's a fairly high rate of error in the photos. So this genus here on the left, Abax, I just went through some more this week. And of the 14 pictures I looked at, I think eight were correct and six were actually a species of Pterostichus. 
We get other charismatic uh, genera like these Lystus with their fabulous plate-like jaws, uh, about 3% of the photo records. Again, it's another one I think commonly recorded as a, that's a cool beetle, I'll take a picture. And then some of the really charismatic and distinctive beetles like the bombardier beetle. Uh, and there are, there are plenty of ground beetles, despite the confusions, which you can't confuse with pretty much any others in the group. Although interestingly, what I do see is some confusion with just other beetles in general. So I've had a couple of records uh, logged as bombardier beetle Brachinus crepitans, which are actually uh, this genus of leaf beetles. They, they have a blue abdomen there, um, thorax is orange, and people say, aha, uh, I've got this beetle. So it may be one of the perils of using some of the photo guides for insect identification, which are not that complete. Uh, if you don't look too closely at the structure, just pick out the obvious patterns, you end up with something quite a way off, but you can understand how someone has arrived at that uh, identification. The, the photo there is from someone uh, on Flickr, that's not the person who made the mistake. Yesterday. I wouldn't never name and shame anybody at all. And what I try to do when, when we are verifying records uh, is, and, and it does, this takes a bit more time, is to try and give some advice on where to look. I don't usually, if it's outside of the ground beetles, I won't correct the record myself. Itself, but I will say have a look at this genus or have a look at this family or maybe you think it, and just try to be a bit helpful because I, I know from 10, 10 plus years ago uh, I was an enthusiastic uh, novice of all insect recording and putting up loads of stuff which was wrong so I know what it's like to be in that position and what it's like when someone knocks you down so uh, I try to be really constructive. Also some fabulous behavior shots uh, this is one of the more unusual ground beetles it looks nothing like a ground beetle uh, I love this. This is another picture from my record. You can see uh, at least five or six of the beetles. No, seven. You see, the more you look, the more they're burying themselves into the sandy substrate where you where you find them. It's quite quite a scarce species, very localized. A really fantastic record. And when I'm looking at pictures, and you, it, it's almost like traveling from your chair. So you you just look at someone's record, and especially where you get a bit of the, the suggestion of what the habitat is like. You know where they are in the country. You can kind of put yourself in their shoes, and travel around seeing all these interesting beetles without going anywhere. It does make make me want to go and actually do more recording myself, which doesn't happen enough. But I I can do it vicariously when I don't get the chance, especially when catching up in, in miserable weather to see everyone's fabulous pictures from other times of the year is great. And of course, there are photo records too for the trickier genera. There are there are some difficult ground beetles, um, 54 species of Bembidian, for example, very small things, 28 of Amara, which all look more or less like that uh, until you get your eye in. And I, this is where uh, people are, are very good generally about saying how they've identified something. It's really helpful to say, I used this key and I saw these features. And if you can try and take a picture of those, especially if they're from specimens, these then become more difficult with just general photo variants, but I get very few uh, because they're smaller and more difficult. Uh, they're less likely to come in, I think. So we, this is kind of a rough total. So of more than more than a, a quarter of the total are taken up just with the tiger beetles and the carabus, so the violet ground beetle and and their elk, these really big charismatic ground beetles, and then quite a lot of larger black species and then pretty much all of the rest some larger colorful species and lots of others but it, it is dominated by photo records dominated by bigger stuff which you'd expect and then lots of the small stuff those are coming in from the um experienced recorders who are recording particularly in this group and going out and getting lots of species or general beetle recorders who are recording absolutely everything that they find usually specimen based and one of the nice things I'm only just beginning to explore about how to use iRecord is just to get a feeling for what's happening day to day. Now, when I'm more uh, up to date with the records, this is what I'll be able to begin to see. And uh, a nice shout out, I, I selected this picture uh, and then it took me a while to make the connection that John was actually speaking. So this is one from John's moth trap. This is a species called Ophonus ardociacus, lovely blue metallic blue, but sort of matte blue with orange legs, a really pretty beetle. That is turning up a lot in moth traps, or as we prefer to call them, light traps, because of course they uh, catch things which are not moths. And if you have a look at the distribution for uh, this species, these are all of the records before 2010. So if you like pre-iRecord, 
and that's 50 years worth uh, and then the last the last 10 to 15 years uh, at least as many records probably more so it's probably becoming more common and it's particularly being picked up uh, with moth trap records and some of the warm conditions we've had uh, in the last few years so a graph there again showing through time it seemed to drop off records are dropping until there's been this influx in moth traps and suddenly we've got lots of records again and this is another one with a similar story, Polystichus connexus. Uh, we thought quite a scarce species in Thames estuary and on coasts. So if you look at the older records, that's where it is. That's before the year 2000, 2001 to 2010. And then more recently, it starts to spread and again appears in light traps. And particularly when it's warm. Um, but because I can now look uh, very easily, uh, very easy to skim back through the records, uh, did this, uh, went through all the records for Polystichus and noticed that actually getting on for one in five records in the entire scheme history of the species were from five days in August 2020. And then I could go to our, our local weather station on the University of Reading, where I work's campus, uh, and look at those five days. And what you notice is the very high nighttime temperatures we had uh, four or five nights with it over 20 degrees or around 20 degrees at midnight and that seems to be a really magic number for lots of beetles turning up in interesting places and this is one of the species that did that never so far in my trap which is uh, yeah a slight injustice so far but i'm sure i'll get one eventually and these are the trending species this week. So if you haven't mentioned the Bria brevicollis is another really common species. Lots of people see it, but it's actually quite tricky to separate from another very similar one. So when you get uh, records like this with extremely sharp pictures, that's wonderful. Uh, some of the just general shot from a distance of this until maybe I get more experience with separating the two basically identical Nebria uh, without seeing those little hairs in the picture of the bottom left little hairs on the tops of the tarsal segments. I can't necessarily verify that I know that's correct. So that, that's an interesting one. It's really common, lots of records, but tricky to verify. Uh, this is one which is a bit easier, Larissera. Uh, there's just one species in the genus and it's got lovely bristly hair sticking out of its antennae, quite unlike any other ground beetle. And again, you just need a shot that shows those and the general structure of the beetle that is very verifiable and quite common. So I, I'm almost there and I've just about run out of time. So you might ask, well, what about the verification? I've got ground beetles that have been sitting around. And this is us at the moment. We've got two verifiers for the recording scheme. Um, I've been going since I took the scheme on 2019 uh, and Melanie has joined at the end of last year, uh, now at UKCEH. Uh, We've both had, uh, I think Claire mentioned, you know, verifiers of volunteers, things happen. Between us, we've moved jobs and houses and uh, various other things have happened, which means that the last year I realize has not been great in terms of verification speed. But there are county beetle recorders uh, who are also verifying records and some other groups. And they, this does uh, throw up some issues because I've noticed a couple of things verified where I think I wouldn't have accepted that record and a couple which have gone in and managed to correct and mostly they're because someone's just happened to have made an error clicked in the wrong box and i've done the same thing which are when you're verifying lots of records it's easy to do um, but it, it it is now something for me to get used to having kind of plowed alone furrow that lots of people are starting to verify the ground beetles and keep an eye on that because all of that data ultimately comes under the umbrella when when you download records it will be in as a ground beetle recording scheme record and if your records have sat around for a long time, there may be a good reason, there may not be, but do feel free to get in touch and I'll try to, to take a look. At, and if there are any questions, we can correspond about them. And we're working on it. So I, I do enjoy the verification and we are starting now to catch up and get back up to speed. We have about 12,000 records outstanding, which is almost exactly what it was when I started four years ago. So we are basically paying the interest and not the capital in terms of the uh, outstanding records. And now we, ha now we have other records in, in iRecord. Uh, I'd like to make more use of the capabilities. I, I, it's so easy to be able to interrogate records and generate maps, I think, in ways which you can do with other systems and software, but it's just all there for anyone to do in iRecord. I think flagging that up would be brilliant. 
just have a slightly better idea of those data flows, who's verifying records, where do they go? Um, there are still some interesting discrepancies between the old scheme database, which is on MBN Atlas, and then the new version, all on iRecord, also on MBN Atlas and duplicated. And they're just trying to have more of a conversation with people who are recording through social media, sharing information with them uh, and providing resources uh, for people who don't necessarily have access to them. And that's where we are. Thank you.